guys. So we are a day late. Yeah, but, late than never. Yeah. Um, actually, we went from super cold weather to nice weather, so we had other things that we had to do. So in the last two videos, we talked about um, how we set up the hydroponic system and then the propagation system. And today, Wayne is going to explain the nutrients. Yeah, so most of the comments and questions we can get is about the nutrients. So we thought we'd skip over some of the seeding and jump on this first. So, I mean, it's not rocket science. Even I'm able to do it, so everyone should be able to do this. There's really three stages to our nutrient program here. And we'll turn around here. And as we saw last week, seeding on the heat mat, we've started different things in the oasis. So at this point, there are no nutrients at all. And you can see here, right here, here's one, little, one that's ready. We're ready to switch, pull this out today and put in our white troughs. There's no nutrients in this at all. So this is planted Friday? Yeah. yeah so Until about that stage. Yeah. You don't want them sitting in the tray with no nutrients so, for too long. So the sooner you can get them out, the better, as soon as you have room. So the second step is in our pre-nursery, I guess we call this, our germination set up. This fertilizer in here, water nutrients, is half strength. So what I mean by that, it's half of what we're running in our main system. Our main system, we run at, we try to run at 1.2 EC. Uh, if you have no lights, you're going to have to beef that up. Before we had lights, we were running at 2 EC in the winter and 1.2 in the summer. Well, now because we have the grow lights, we're really able to run between 1.2 and 1.4 all winter. And if you look down this greenhouse, you can see there's all kinds of growth. Look behind Patty here. Things are looking phenomenal. Sure are. It's actually a little crowded. we got to get some of this out of here this week. Uh, we just had a farmer's market. It's a phenomenal farmer's market on Saturday. Got rid of everything we, we took. So that was, that was great. So in our main tank, our main finishing, like as I was saying, we try to maintain 1.2 as an EC. And in that recipe, there's three ingredients. And I've got them laid out here for you so you can see. Here's the main NPK that we use. The, we get this from Plant Products, which is a Canadian company. And I, I do believe they're in the U.S. They're around the world. But if you can't get hold of this 61131, I would suggest you find get hold of Master Blend. You know, they've got uh, some pretty good stuff too out there that we've used for other products, not the lettuce so much, but the tomatoes and stuff. So, we use our, nu our nutrients here, our hydroponic, water soluble. We use greenhouse grade calcium, and you can see the number here, 15.500, and here's, a, here's what each one of them look like. And the third ingredient is magnesium sulfate which is just Epsom salt. Same product. We've used this when we've run out. And put, sometimes it's hard to get the big bags. And here it is here. Now mixing it up is a little different and will be different wherever you're, you're located because of your water quality that you're using. Uh, I come up with my own recipe where for every 10.5 grams of fertilizer I use 8.5 grams of calcium and that's just what I've come up with the growth that I'm and I'm happy with the growth you know our, our goal here in the greenhouse is to, to harvest equivalent to 300 pounds of lettuce a week out of this greenhouse when I say equivalent uh, I'm also talking dollars because of the Swiss chard the beet tops arugula in the end I want the equivalent to 300 pounds of lettuce so I have a, a, a very clientele where we have a food CSA veggie box, we have the farmer's market, the restaurants, and they all want a bit of everything, so it's hard to grow just lettuce. So that's why we have the we have eight or nine items in here, and it just seems to work well for us. And then, of course the last one is the Epsom salts, or magnesium sulfate. Now I've played with this a little bit, and right now we're adding 50 grams for every batch of fertilizer we, we mix up. And that's in a 50 gallon yeah, 50 barrel. Yeah, US gallon barrel, which we top our big tank up two or three times a day, depending on the weather, sometimes only once a day. Now again, this all depends on the quality of your water. Uh, you might not need as much nutrients or more. We're very lucky here that we have what they call pure water. So uh, 
I'll show you this. I just took this right out of the garden hose this morning, well, about an hour ago, because it takes a while for this to uh, settle down. But you can see, I don't know if you can see that there, our water is 5.5. I hope you can see that, guys. Yeah. So our range in the pH, we're looking for 5.8 to 6.2. We try to maintain 6 as well as close as we can, and we do that by usually trying to push it down, never up. Once I add the fertilizer to this water, it's usually bang on. So on a sunny day, the it'll climb, pH will climb a little bit, and I'll have to add a teaspoon, a tablespoon of this food grade acid. This is a 35%, I believe, uh, phosphoric acid. Uh, very simple to use. I mean, we have a scoop of it over in the corner there, another jug in the corner with a little scoop. And we know a tablespoon will bring it down two points, two tenths. And usually, I can actually show you, I can take a sample here right now. And what I'll do is I'll also test the pH. So this should bring it up into the six range somewhere. We'll let that sit there for a second. So that water he just put in there is coming out with nutrient in it. Yeah. It's going up. Yeah. It only takes a couple minutes. Here you can see, I think you can see it, it's sitting at 5.9 right now. I had added a scoop of acid last night, so it, it should stay there. It's a dull day. It'll probably sit there now for a day or two, and then I'll have to add some more. So we're pretty lucky that way we have really good water. So why I have this out here, and this is a great tool, this is a blue lab, I mean this is the one we've been using. I've only had to replace this once over six years, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And it can, you can calibrate it, you can get your buffers, your, your four and seven buffer, and you can cal calibrate that every so often. I do it every month or so, make sure everything's accurate. But, uh, it's a pretty simple process. Now the only other thing is our strength, our EC, which is how we measure our strength of our nutrients. So here's my trunnion that I use. Again, it's Blue Lab. And I, I only use a Blue Lab because they were what I was able to get locally and, and they seem to be really good quality. So there, see I'm running a, it's bouncing. Uh, can you see that light mm -hmm. bouncing back and forth? Bouncing forth between one, 1.2 and well there it stopped at 1.2 and really that's where I want it maybe in the you know come New Year's when the days are really Christmas time when the days are really getting short I will bump it up a little bit and, uh, in order to get that right now I'm using uh, in, in 50 US gallons I'm using 180 grams of calcium 220 grams of fertilizer and 50 grams of Epsom salt and I'll tell you, we never used to use the Epsom salt. We only started using that a, maybe a year ago. Because we were finding that the center of some of our lettuce, we weren't getting nice big solid heads. We get lots of foliage on the other edge, but very thin loose. on the inside. Yeah, and, and loose. Maybe we'll take a walk down here and I'll show you what I meant. Especially in the Boston. And now the difference is unbelievable. So come on down this way. This is what I wanted to show you. This is what I want to take to the market. This is, just looks beautiful, right? You know, and they're starting to ball up here a little bit, which is fine. It still looks nice. A little more land, a little more solid. And I'll actually throw some of the heavier ones right into my bags of mix. It's beautiful. Uh, yeah, it's beautiful lettuce. And so we, we have noticed a big difference by adding the Epsom salt, which that particular fertilizer doesn't call for, where I know some of them do. But we've just learned over time tweaking things and making things, you know, grow a little better for it for us. So I mean you can see the things are just flourishing in here right now. This is the middle of November. Well, I really haven't used the lights much yet. I, the odd day I'll turn them on but right now I'm actually trying to slow things down a little so uh, we'll see what happens there. So I hope that helps with the nutrients. Um, if you have any more questions just you know put a comment on there and we'll try to help you any way we can. All right so there you go and uh well next week we'll, we'll start covering the individual crops we, we do nine or ten different items in here they're all seeded differently 
uh, to get the most volume that we possibly can and, and the proper rotation. Scheduling in here is probably the hardest job we have. But it, it's working. Yeah, it's, it is. It but is it, working. It's just to stay on top, make sure you have enough for, especially for your standing orders every week. So I think that's what we'll do next week. We'll start covering the individual crops. Yep. So anyways. So all the seeding. Yep. Okay. So have a good week. And uh, right after this video is uploaded, for those of you waiting, I'm going to film today my microgreen video. Um, and we'll get started on that. So we'll hopefully have two videos going up each week. And again, we apologize for being late, but stuff happens. So have a great day, everyone. See you soon. Bye.